It is a beautiful day here at Pottstown Memorial Park. I'm here at the fifth annual Pottstown Pet Fair where we're going to check out some awesome vendors and you at home will be able to learn some incredible pet facts that might help you in the future. Let's go check it out. I'm here with Taylor from the SPCA and she's going to tell us a little bit about her beautiful dog. This is Adoptable Smidget. He is a three-year-old Yorkie mix available at our Perky Omenville facility. And what does he like to do for fun? What's his temperament? He is a very fun-loving and active guy. He absolutely loves going out for runs and walks. He is so adorable, so someone should really think about adopting him. <laughs> Hello, I'm here with Sue Dudak, a volunteer for the American Cancer Society's Bark for Life. Now, Sue, what is the big Bark for Life, when is, when is it this year? It is April 16th, 2016, and um, right here at Memorial Park. We're very excited about it. And this actually happens to be the 10th year for the Bark for Life here in Pottstown, which is where it originated. And we're really, really excited because it is gone all over the country and is now also international too. Um, so that's kind of like our theme for this year that um, barking across the world for 10 years and the relay theme is also um, one, one world, one cure. So it kind of all ties together. So we're super excited about it and we're happy to be here and today having our things here at the, the pet fair and getting our word out and save the dates. So it's good. <laughs> Thank so you. what's something special we can expect this year? Well, we want to really honor some of the people that started Bark for Life um, 10 years ago. In 2007 is when it started, and it actually started just as a walk um, uh, as part of another event, and, and it took off from there. So we're, we are happy to, to have it have grown as it has, and it's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. We all appreciate what you and your organization are doing. Thank you so much. So what breed of dog is this? He's a Weiler Dane, so he's half Great Dane, half Rottweiler. And what's his name? His name's DJ. And how did you hear about the Pottstown Pet Expo? Uh, my friend Amy actually had told me about it. That's awesome. So what does this dog like to do for fun? Oh my gosh, he is just lazy. So <laughs> he just lays around a lot. Um, but we do take him to the Birdsboro Douglasville um, dog park every once in a while. So he gets to play with his friends then. And do you have any other dogs? We do. We have a lasso Opso, so a little 10-pound ankle biter. <laughs> and how do they get along? Uh, they don't. <laughs> he, uh, DJ loves all other dogs, um, but unfortunately our other dog, Charlie, does not like any other dogs. So. <laughs> well, he's very beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm here with Kim Trial, one of the owners of Brusket's Beer Grain Dog Bones. Now, how did this all get started? Uh, it actually happened by accident. We're home brewers. We make beer. When you're done brewing beer, you end up with a bag of grain. It's barley, oats, and rye. Kind of the same premise when you steep tea, you steep beer. It gives your beer its color and its flavor. So we brewed a batch of beer one weekend, took the grain outside, put it on the picnic table to go to the compost bin, and I forgot and I let our dogs out. One of our dogs, the dog that's actually on this bag right here, he stole the grain off of the table, opened it up on the patio, and shared it with all the other dogs. So this happened totally by accident totally by accident. Wow. And are you a local company? We are local. We're from Telford, which is about a half an hour from Pottstown. So yeah, we didn't drive too far to be here. We were here last year, so a uh, really nice area. And what ingredients are in your product? The ingredients are really basic. It's the barley, oats, and rye from the brewing process. And those are actually grains that dogs should have in their diet, unlike the cornmeal and soy and wheat that's in a lot of products. So it's four ingredients. Spent beer grain, egg, flour, and either peanut butter, pumpkin, or sweet potato. That's all that's in it. There's no salt, no sugar, no additives, no preservatives, an all-natural product. Wow, that's awesome, and apparently the dogs love it. The dogs do love it, So yeah. do you do any work with rescues or other organizations? We do, actually. All the dogs that are on the pictures out here are our dogs. We foster, we rescue, and we take care of military family dogs. So while people are serving, we take care of their dogs for them. Um, another really cool thing that we do is we work with the U.S. War Dog Association. So three times a year, we send care packages over to the military canines that are serving. Everybody sends stuff to soldiers all the time. They forget we have canines. 
89 soldiers that are actually serving too. So three times a year we send shipments over. Um, another thing that we do with rescues is on our website, anything purchased online, 50 cents from every bag goes to a rescue that we sponsor for the month. So every month we sponsor a different rescue. And then we also match it as a company. So really a dollar per bag goes to the Rescue of the Month program that we do. That is so awesome. I'm sure everybody and the dogs appreciate what you're doing here. We try to do the right things. It's not just about making money for us, it's about providing a good quality product and being socially responsible with what we do. We both grew up military family, my partner and I that started this, and so that's why we give back to military families. It means a lot to us. That is so wonderful. Thank you for your time. Oh no, thank you, I appreciate it. I'm here with Julia. She's the owner of this lovely dog. What breed are they? He's a golden doodle. Hmm. What's his name? His name's Cash. Cash. And what does he like to do for fun? Swim. He is a huge swimmer. He's got big webbed feet. <laughs> and he will jump into any body of water we can find. That is so cute. I'm here with Karen Lewandowski and Bill the Cat Guy. Now, how did it all start? Well, Karen had an idea about five years ago about doing events, doing things for pets. And I said to Karen, well, why don't we do a pet fair? She agreed to go along with me and uh, liked the idea. And the first year we had maybe 400 people, uh, 30, 40 vendors. The second year was about the same. And then I said, we have a park down here. Why don't we use the park? And we tried it. And this year we have probably 95 vendors. And the estimate is about 5,000 people. And it's the biggest, as Karen keeps saying, it's the biggest free pet bear in the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, we don't make any profit from this. Our uh, attempt and our goal is to find homes for homeless animals and uh, to rescue and adopt. And that's our mission. And we're helping the rescues in our area and far out of our area really now because a lot of us has joined our event and they come to adopt animals. They don't actually... Uh, exchange animals here today. They take applications, they go, they visit the homes, they screen properly for who can adopt and who is eligible to have animals and dogs. We're trying to cut less down on the homeless rate in our uh, country because it is so high. So, uh, And like you say, it's not only dogs, cats, we have skunks here, we snakes. Bombers, uh, albino python. Yeah. Yeah, we have it all here, skunks, you name it. We've had, we last, the other years we had pigs. We don't have pigs this year, but uh, we have animals of every kind here, you know. We also have a lot of educational uh, booths down here. Uh, we have Affordable Spay and Neuter with their vaccine clinic. Uh, my group, uh, Catnaps, is talking about the importance of spay and neutering. Uh, the Paul's Project talks about the harm of declawing animals and then sister millicent from st john's lutheran church in boyertown is doing blessing of the animals there's all kind of workshops here our Pottstown canine uh police de uh, dog department was out here for demonstrations i'm trying to think we had a photographer here dog, dog trainers there was a lady that came today that her dog had just had stroke. She and was visibly upset. We, uh, she thought possibly the dog could probably pass away today. So she wanted to get it blessed by Sister Millicent. Um, we have just all peoples from all denominations. They come here for a specific dog because there's a specific rescue here and they want to see and they want to get the dog they want, you know. So that's what we try to do, you know. Th little things like that make the event. Um, we've had uh, a great success in placing animals in and this, this is event. Something positive. You know, we hear so much negative stuff, and I'm sorry I have to say that, but it's the truth. This is something positive. You have 5,000 people here today. You know, we've had, thank God, no problems. The biggest problem we have is traffic. You know, where are we going to put the cars? But we'll, you know, thanks to the firemen helping, we're finding spots for that. Everybody's been very cooperative. Uh, seven o'clock. I was down here at six o'clock in the morning, starting to map things out. Uh, seven o'clock. I Karen called me. We were getting pretzel. I said, "She's got to come here." I'm going nuts. I don't know which way to go. But after that, all calmed down. After it all calmed down, everybody got into their spots, and now we're having a good time. And it's quarter after one, and it'll be over in another hour and a half. 
And if people would like to get involved, uh, how they would would be come to the borough of Pottstown. We're both Pottstown borough employees in the licensing and inspections department. We also have, uh, you could come to our department and inquire about how to get involved with this event or to attain space participate in the event and we also have a new Facebook page which is Pottstown Pets Town and our goal is to make Pottstown a pet friendly place to come. And I think Pottstown our Facebook page would probably be the place that has like every, everything that's going on uh, we do postings uh, the uh, rescues the organization does posting and it kind of keeps you up to date of what's going on in the animal world what we fail to forget what we fail to realize is that the pet industry is a 58 billion dollar a year that's b as in boys uh industry a year and we're out to capture some of that in Potsdam, whether it's a veterinarian i have this fantasy of a cat cafe there's pet stores all sorts of things you can do so 58 billion is nothing to sneeze at we want to bring it here for our community and so our people can enjoy it here in Pottstown. And as you can see, there's a lot of people out here with a lot of animals today enjoying it. So it crosses all cultures, everything we can do. Okay? So that's what we're here to do, make our, 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 our place that we live and we work in better for everyone and for the animals. So you heard it. You better get involved next year because this is a great event. So find their Facebook page and come down next year. You don't want to miss it. I'm here with Hayden, who's the owner of this beautiful little dog. What's her name? Her name's Cricket. And what breed of dog is she? She is a Morky, a Maltese and a Yorkie mix. I'm here with Mary Beth Yanessa, and she is the president of the Animal House Project. Now, what is this project's mission statement? We help families that are facing financial crisis feed their animals with donated pet food, but we also supply low-cost vaccinations, wellness clinic, and spay and neuter program. We service all of Chester County, Western Montgomery County, and Eastern Berks Counties. So how many dogs are you helping out? Well, we feed dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, fishes, uh, donkeys, horses, I have, and we're up to 3,900 pets, companion pets per month, and 1,800 rescue pets per month. Wow, so how did this all get started? It started in 2004 with a woman that uh, owned a no-kill shelter and she found that 95% of the, re the pets being surrendered were because of they couldn't feed or care for their animals. So she converted it to a pet food pantry. That's really awesome. So what people are you helping out? So the demographics of the people that we help are senior citizens and military vets that are, that are retired on fixed incomes. We just picked up wounded warriors. Uh, so we also are helping wounded warriors coming back from military that have health issues, uh, single family, parents, as well as cancer patients. And um, the list is growing, that's for sure. This is such an incredible project, and it is so, and this so is, kind. This is Yoshi. He's our spokes puppy for the pet food pantry. What breed is he? He's a long coat Akita. And he comes out to all the community events. He goes to the schools. He um, he does in the inner, at Christmas time, we do Operation lend -a paul with the elementary schools, and he goes out, they do uh, pet food drives for us. So, so, and he does this, he does community events, spreads the word. That's so awesome. He's so cute. This is Here. such an awesome thing. Here you go. There you go. I'll give you a bribery. <laughs> so, but um, the organization is growing. We need help with volunteers. We need help with donations of pet food, especially wet dog food and uh, just getting the word out to people that need help. We're located at 1055 South Hanover Street in North Coventry Township. It's at the intersection of South Hanover and Cedarville Roads. So definitely think about donating because this is such a worthy cause and it is definitely affecting so many people. So donate and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm here with Linda, who is the president, Beth, who is the sec secretary on the board of directors, and Katie and Melissa, who are both volunteers of the catnap program of Pottstown. So tell us about your trap, neuter, and release program. We offer trap, neuter, return um, for the borough of Pottstown residents. It does not cost anything. For areas in the uh, surrounding area here, we charge $10 per cat. They come back spayed, neutered, rabies, distemper, uh, vaccinated. 
if they're friendly enough and they're ferals, you know, they're out there, they could be stray cats, we will keep them and offer them for adoption when we have room. So who do your services reach? Who do they reach? Um, actually, they go through Chester County, Berks County, Montgomery County. Very nice. And uh, tell us about a little bit about your fosters. Our fosters are all rescued off the street or they were born to uh, feral mom cats um, or friendly mom cats out there. When they are old enough, we get them spayed and neutered, rabies vaccinated, uh, distemper vaccinated, tested for leukemia and FIV, uh, wormed and microchipped. So how important is it for cats to be spayed or neutered? It really, really helps with their attitudes and personalities. Um, male cats are less likely to spray. Female cats are less likely to run around looking for male cats. Um, and it greatly reduces the population of unwanted cats and kittens. That's awesome. So this is a great program. How do you get your funds? <laughs> yeah, thank you, friends. Donations. Donations through our website. Uh, we have PayPal. Um, people just send us checks once in a while. Amazon um, Smile. Amazon Smile, yes. Redner's um, Save a Tape. This is awesome. This is a really nice program, so you should really think about donating because these cats are in need, and it's such a good cause. So who is this adorable little creature? This is Hades. He's a seven-day-old fosterling kitten that we are currently bottle feeding and taking care of because he was abandoned by his mother. And this is what we do at fosterlings. We bottle feed until they are old enough to be adopted by great people in the Pottstown community. His eyes aren't open yet. No, he's only seven days old. Typically kittens will open their eyes sometime between six to ten days. And his ears are not open yet either. And right now he's feeding anywhere between two to three hours around the clock. So do you know yet what kind of kitten he is? Um, right now he's a tabby, which is most kittens. Um, he was born feral and left in a field. and. Right now, we're guessing he's going to be black. <laughs> he's so adorable. Oh, my goodness. Yes, thank you. Say hi, Hades. Say hi, everybody. I'm here with Cheryl Miller. She's the third ward councilwoman, and she is wonderfully dressed. So how long have you been involved with the Potsdam Pet Fair? I've been on the Pet Fair Committee for two years. And do you have pets of your own? I have lots of rescues of my own because it's my life's passion, so I always have... Um, animals, rescue animals coming in and rescue animals going out. And how did you get involved here? Here with the Pet Fair Committee? Well, animals are my passion and this is my second year serving on Borough Council, so having a position on Borough Council and animals in my possession as my passion, this is certainly a natural transition for me to be a part of the Pet Fair Committee. And cats or dogs? I rescue everything, but clearly cats are my favorite. So what is Pottstown doing to become a more pet-friendly community? Well, aside from this being our fifth annual pet fair, we are also redoing our animal ordinances. And they have just been introduced and have been unanimously ad adopted for, um, for the solicitor to advertise. And they're very protective for the animals. They're, they're, we're working on... Um, much better protections to the animals as far as sheltering, as far as tethering, um, as far as weather, having them be indoors and just making sure that they are cared for properly in the way that they deserve to be. That's wonderful. I think this is a big step forward for Pottstown. I agree. A big step forward. <laughs> this is Riley and she owns this adorable dog. What breed of dog is he? He's a mutt. <laughs> and what's his name? Sprout. Sprout. And where are you guys from? We're from, well, the most, uh, the rescue is from um, Gilbertsville, Pottstown area. Very nice. And what does this little boy like to do for fun? He loves to run and play fetch. <laughs> He's so cute. We're here at Diane's rescue booth at the Pottstown Pet Fair, where they're showcasing some of their pets available for adoption. This is Indy. He's a seven-month-old collie bo boxer mix who loves belly rubs, cuddling, and going hiking. He likes other dogs and is a great listener. Indy, can you sit? Sit. Sit. Good boy. And who else do we have here? These are 10-week-old Shih Tzu Schnauzer mixes, mixed puppies. 
They are so adorable. Oh my goodness. What are their names? If, do they this have any? This one is, that one's Bella and this one's Rosie. They're so adorable. So where are you located? What are your hours? And how can someone who's interested in an adopted dog can go about that adoption process? We are at uh, 1486 South Hanover Street on Route 100. So it's about two miles south of the Coventry Mall on Route 100. Um, we're open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And Sundays are 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Um, for adoptions, you're welcome to stop into our store and see who we have available for adoption. You can also um, look at, check out our website at uh, www.ddpets.com. Um, applications can be filled out either on the website or in our store. Awesome. And then do you have any other kinds of animals available for adoption or is it just dogs? Uh, mostly dogs. We also have, there are some cats uh, and kittens also available for adoption through Forever Home Rescue that uses our cat windows. Mm -hmm. So, and then there, we have all the other types of animals that people can see for, for purchase, like birds and fish and Parrot. rabbits. Yep, small animals, all kinds of fun stuff. That's so awesome. Uh, so, can you pick up supplies and other stuff? like that there? Yes, we're a full retail store and we do carry um, anywhere from holistic and natural dog and cat foods um, all the way to bird cages and foods as well as fish tanks and supplies and all kinds of things. Okay, so Diane's Pets is the place to go if you're looking for a dog or if you just need some dog supplies or pet supplies in general. They have so many options and the dogs are so adorable. So stop by and pick up a pet. I'm here with Cindy Baker. She's the practitioner and coordinator for Healing Touch for Animals and the owner of Touched by a Paw. Now, what is Healing Touch for Animals? So Healing Touch for Animals is a um, holistic health care for animals, and it's all about relaxation. So it's like a spa treatment for the animals. They absolutely love it. And when um, they relax to that level, it's, a, it's an energy modality, so we're working with their energy system. And when they relax to that level, then there's a physiological process that starts to happen inside their body, which is this chart. It starts with the body relaxing, and then endorphins are released, muscles relax, circulation increases, oxygen elevates, nutrients are absorbed, enzymes are built, hormones are regulated, toxins are released, healthy cell growth is promoted, and all that works to strengthen the immune system. And with a strengthened healthy immune system, then that allows the body to heal itself. And what's great about this is that it doesn't heal just on a physical level, but it heals on an emotional and uh, mental level, also an instinctual level. So it's very good for rescue animals, which we have a lot of here, because they come from an uncertain background. And there's been a lot of stress just in getting them to their homes. And this really helps to relax them, helps them to perhaps release the, any trauma that's going on, which then will get rid of any triggers that cause unusual unwanted behavior so it's just so wonderful to be able to work with the animals and just they're so expressive they can't hide what they're feeling and they will show you that they are relaxed and then once they relax then the magic starts inside their body um, it started back in the late 80s um, with a therapeutic nurse who um, had a lot of gifts and she wanted to bring it out of the nursing world into the mainstream and she felt that healing touch for humans, for people, should be in every household. And so she um, created the healing touch program and then one of her instructors, Carol Comator, was a um, massage therapist, a vet tech and um, had a very strong gift with energy and she was able to see that the animal energy is completely different from the human energy and that um, the techniques needed to be adjusted a little bit to really benefit the animals to optimize their their energy and their energy systems and so she created with the permission of Janet Mankin she created Healing Touch for Animals and uh, she started out in the late 90s and she's now she thought it was just going to be a um, weekend class here or there in Denver and we're across the country in four or five different countries. So it's really grown and I have really resonated with it so much that I wanted to become a coordinator and spread the word. In addition to um, working on the animals myself, I wanted to um, educate people and spread the, spread the word. So we offer classes in the area and we have a class coming up at the end of October. 
and so you can learn how to do this work on your own animals and really get to um, communicate and connect with your animals at a different level and really get that strong bond. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to work with the animals. So how would someone at home seek out this type of treatment for their dog or themselves? So um, I, I do a lot of uh, pet events and um, try to get the word out that way. Um, I um, send out a lot of emails, do a lot of networking um, and word of mouth. So it's, it's, uh, I do have a website. Um, my website is www.touch-by-a-paw.com. And then the modality Healing Touch for Animals also has a website um, at uh, healingtouchforanimals.com. So. And how does it differ from other programs like this, like massages or chiropractic services? So what we are focusing on is the energy system in the body. So um, chiropractic focuses on the nervous system and the skeletal system. Massage works on the muscular system. And we are focusing on the energy system. It's all complementary. It's all needed for a healthy body. Um, but we're, we're focusing on the energy piece. So what could someone expect during a typical treatment? So um, I would start out with an assessment. And as uh, just like a doctor uses a stethoscope as a tool for his assessment, I use a tool to assess the energy, and that tool is a pendulum. And so uh, the pendulum is able to tell me whether the energy is blocked or flowing and where the, where the blockages are. And then based on that assessment, then I would apply the different techniques to get that energy open and flowing. And um, then I would reassess at the end, and typically the uh, energy is always open and flowing. And even here, we have a, a setup back here where we've been doing little mini sessions with um, some of the canine attendees here. And even in the, the um, confusion and the hubbub of what's going on here, you can still see that the animals relax and their owners can see a difference. So it's just so rewarding. Do, they, do the owners need to take their pets to the office? No, actually, since it's all about relaxation, we like to keep the pet as relaxed as possible. Otherwise, if we stress them out before getting them to the place, then you know I'm taking two steps back to go two steps forward. So um, I would either come to the um, animal's house or um, the nature of energy is that it follows intention. So it is possible to um, actually do this work via distance. So I can be in my healing room at home and be working on an animal at another location and the owner will see the same re relaxing effects from that animal if I'm right in the room next to her or if I'm back in my healing studio. We're packing it up here at the Pottstown Pet Fair. It's been another great one, so next year make sure you come down and visit all these sweet vendors. You don't want to miss it.